for question time. Questions first of all to the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. And we will start with 15 minutes of topical questions. And I call Danny Kinahan. Thank Kinahan. you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Minister, we've had a, a wonderful and successful our time in our place, and enormously successful Titanic, UK City of Culture, and many, many other things um, with the great work of Howard Hastings. But what's the next step? What's the next plan? I thank the member for his question, and he is right to mention the success of our time, our place, which of course was just in relation to 2012. The idea behind it was to give us a platform really to uh, really have a game changer in respect of our tourism industry. We have continued up this year with the World Peace and Fire Games, the UK City of Culture, and then of course uh, the G8, which came to us off the back of the Prime Minister's decision uh, to hold that event uh, in County Fermanagh. Next year, uh, we have the Giro d'Italia coming, and we are very much looking at how events can really make a change uh, to the tourism uh, product here, as well as, of course, investing in our infrastructure. So it's about investing in the infrastructure, but then also bringing events in uh, to Northern Ireland, and we're continuing to work on that strategy. Mr. Kennehan. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer. I wonder if we could look at our time, our place, our people and look at a future having a Hall of Fame, as I think we could all list many people. Tony McCoy, we've already spoken of today, Mary Peters, the Northern Ireland football team under Billy Bingham, Joey Dunlop, we could go on. But could we look at having a, an Olympic-style museum or a Hall of Fame that actually shows the very best of everything that's in Northern Ireland and actually put the funds towards it and make that one of our top priorities in the future? I thank the member for that comment. Of course, this has been raised with me uh, on a number of occasions, uh, uh, most notably by Dame Mary Peters, who is a great supporter of this idea, and indeed uh, Ronnie Spence, the outgoing chair of the Heritage uh, Lottery Fund as well. I'm certainly someone who would be supportive of that idea. I suppose the um, critical issue in it is not just setting it up, but making it sustainable into the future. Uh, and therefore, it's not just a matter for me, as the member will understand, but a, member prob a matter probably for a number of departments right across government. Uh, if the member wishes to come and speak to me about the matter, I'm quite happy to do so. Uh, as I say, it is good to celebrate our people here in Northern Ireland, very much so, because that inspires young people uh, from a different generation, and that's what we're all about. Alec Maskey. Mr. Maskey. Could I ask the Minister, the Minister is aware of the, the proposed flag leader protest in Belfast City Centre in the run-up to Christmas. Can the Minister give us her assessment of uh, such protests on the uh, local city centre economy? I thank the member for his question. There have been uh, a number of reports uh, recently in relation to the impact it has had on the city centre in particular. Uh, I received one recently and I'm still uh, assessing that. Um, I have to say, though, that they just interviewed 30 firms in Belfast, so I suppose we have to look at the, uh, the underlying statistical robustness of the, the, the figures that come uh, to us. But notwithstanding that, uh, I think we have to recognise uh, that protests of any nature in the city centre will have an impact on trade, particularly if it's in and around the peak shopping times. Uh, and therefore, I will renew my call, which I made I think the last time I was on my feet in this House uh, during question time, that there needs to be dialogue uh, between those planning any protests and the people who are most directly affected, i.e. the traders. Uh, Mr. Maskey. Uh, could I thank the Minister for that reply? I know I'm well, well aware and appreciate her previous comments on that. But in light of that, could I ask the Minister, has she managed herself to have any uh, contact with any of the organized, protest organisers, more particularly the retailers themselves, actually, to discuss the matter? Well, of course, I've uh, been speaking to the retailers right throughout uh, the original uh, protest time. Indeed, he will recognise that it was my department, along uh, with OFM uh, DFM, who took the lead in the Backing Belfast campaign, which was hugely successful, I have to say, and, and very much appreciated uh, by uh, not only the traders, uh, but the restaurant owners uh, and bar owners uh, in Belfast. And I am, my door is open. Uh, I would very much uh, like to be of assistance and be a facilitating uh, uh, um, person, if I can, as well, uh, in relation to anything that is planned for the winter months, because we do want to see Belfast uh, reaching its potential over the winter months, and uh, certainly if there's anything I can do to assist that, I will, of course, make myself available. 
Jill Barton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister what is her department doing to make the energy regulator be more effective in meeting the interests of electricity consumers? Utility regulator. Sorry, um, the utility regulator, uh, as you know, uh, there's just been a change in personnel there, uh, and indeed we very much uh, wish uh, the outgoing utility regulator well, uh, and welcome the new utility regulator, Mrs Jenny Piper, to her position. Uh, I look forward to having an engagement with Mrs Piper in the very near future uh, in relation to her role uh, and how she sees it moving forward, but as the member will know, uh, the role of the utility regulator is an independent one, uh, and, may, and, and I may express opinions. Uh, it is up to the utility regulator as to whether she, on this occasion, takes them into account. Joe Bird. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Minister for her answer. Would the Minister agree, however, that there is a gross imbalance when somebody is looking for a new supply of electricity? I know someone who has built a new house who has been quoted $16,500 for a connection charge, and they live within 90 metres of an adjacent house. What can be done through this House to make sure that, that abuse of power is not manifested in the future? Well, can I say to the member that if he uh, looks at the initial findings, and they are initial findings in respect of the price determination, the RP5 price determination that came out uh, on Friday, uh, where the regulator gave a determination that was not accepted by NIE and it went to the Competition Commission, uh, and there have been uh, very important uh, rulings made by the Competition Commission in relation to how NIE deals with not just its price controls, but also how it invests in its infrastructure. Uh, and I've often said to this House that it's, when you look at uh, limiting the price in relation to energy, then there's a consequence for that. And the consequence uh, really uh, is in and around the commerciality of NIE and how they work into the future. And I, I do recognise uh, what the member is talking about because uh, being a, a, an MLA from the west of the country, I too have had constituents coming to me and telling me they've been asked for hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, to connect to the grid. Uh, but it's all connected in, uh, in relation to how much money NIE can uh, actually uh, invest in the grid and how they are allowed to do that because they are regulated uh, by the utility regulator. And if the member uh, wants me to mention this to the regulator, I certainly will when I get the opportunity to meet with her. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would ask the Minister if you could let us have an update on Invest Northern Ireland's plans for the regeneration of the Springfield Road, Woodville area of Belfast. Well, as far as I understand, the, nego the negotiations are ongoing in relation to that site. I understand the City Council have also an interest in that site as well. Uh, they were looking uh, at uh, different plans for that area, so they're still uh, in talks about what's the best way to develop that site. Leslie Creed. I uh, thank the Minister for that. I wonder, Minister, following on, could you provide any details of how Invest Northern Ireland, uh, the Belfast City Council and indeed the Metropolitan College plan to cooperate uh, on developing the innovation incubation unit in that area? Well, I know that uh, Belfast Metropolitan College are doing some excellent work uh, up in West Belfast. Indeed, I had the chance to uh, visit the work that they're doing in and around renewable energy and the way in which they are hoping to retrain uh, people perhaps from the construction industry who are finding it difficult to find work they're retraining them uh, into the renewable energy sector. I don't have the details in relation to how those three organisations are working together in front of me, but I'm very happy uh, to provide the member with written information uh, and place a copy in the library. Mickey Brady. Mr Brady. Gorham, I got uh, Concordia. Uh, can I ask the Minister for her reaction to the reports published by the Ulster Bank and Intertrade Ireland indicating further positive news in the economy? Gorham, I got well, I very much welcome uh, both of those reports today. Um, uh, it again uh, shows that we are stabilising the economy here and moving uh, into growth mode, um, particularly encouraging that growth was seen not just in specific sectors but right across all the different sectors, including retail, services, construction and manufacturing. Also pleasing, uh, Mr Speaker, to note that employment has expanded strongly as well and indeed is at its fastest rate, according to the Ulster Bank PMI survey, uh, for uh, six years. So that is indeed to be welcomed uh, and we look forward to seeing a continued growth in the right direction. Mickey Brady. Uh, I thank the Minister for her answer. And would the Minister accept that the so-called green shoots of recovery 
are not evident in every sector, in every location across the north, and how does she plan to address that? Well, as I said in uh, answer to the first um, question, the PMI report actually for the first time are saying that they are seeing growth across uh, all of the main sectors. So I do very much welcome that because until now, uh, we've been talking about growth uh, in the agri-food sector, for example, which has always been a very strong uh, sector, first in Northern Ireland, and then indeed in the construction and retail, we've been seeing huge difficulties. And I'm not suggesting that we're back to where we were um, pre-2008. I'm not suggesting that at all. But I think we are seeing a stabilisation uh, in relation to some of those sectors. In other words, I think they've bottomed it out. Uh, and because of that, I think we are seeing growth coming around in those sectors for the very first time. Barry McElduff. Uh, can I thank the Minister for her active interest in OMA Enterprise Company uh, recently and, and generally? Uh, and can I ask the Minister what financial or other support arrangements are in place generally for start-up businesses at this time? Well, the, uh, of course, start-up uh, start business uh, advice and assistance that people gain from uh, Invest Northern Ireland, you remember the Regional Development Programme was in some difficulty last year. I'm very pleased to say that that has now rolled out very effectively across Northern Ireland and indeed his own constituency is one of the stronger constituencies in terms of start-up businesses. Uh, as well as that, I'm, I am very pleased to see that start-up loans are now being made available. They were being made available in England and Wales, but they are now being made available uh, in Northern Ireland as well. I very much welcome that. Um, that was part of the economic pact and something we discussed with uh, the business secretary when he came to Northern Ireland about a month ago. So pleased to see that that is now in place as well. And it is about having companies like uh, OMA Enterprise uh, to really engender uh, an ecosystem uh, for new companies so that they can uh, a a approach people like Nick O'Shiel uh, for help and assistance and he can then signpost them to the appropriate place. So I am a big supporter of Omer Enterprise. I think they're doing a tremendous job with the facilities that they have uh, and I'll always be pleased to visit there again. Mr Michael Duff. Thank the Minister for her answer. Uh, the Minister will know that OMA Enterprise Centre recently has developed, I think, a, a further 31 additional units there. How might her department work with local business community in OMA to help fill these units and further develop entrepreneurship? Well, one of the exciting things about OMA Enterprise Centre, of course, is the fact that it has direct access into Project Kelvin. I think that's a tremendously strong selling point and one of the reasons why uh, OMA Enterprise, through uh, Nick O'Shiel, uh, is working uh, with Fermanagh uh, in the person of Mark Maguire to develop the smart region uh, philosophy and we're hoping to appoint a data analyst to cover the southwest region in the near future and that will inform uh, companies who are seeking to set up what the needs of that area is and I think it's a new and innovative way to looking at startup companies and indeed inward investment. Uh, I know uh, that there's been briefings for the different political parties recently in relation to that and I hope that everybody in the region can get behind that idea because I think it's a new way of looking at investment for the South West region. Trevor Lund. Mr Lund. Uh, thank you Mr Speaker. Could I ask the Minister for her assessment of the, the tourism potential of the Narrow Water Bridge project? Well, the Narrow Water Bridge project has always been, uh, a, a, first of all, a, a, a bridge to connect people as opposed to a tourism bridge. It was always secondary uh, in terms of tourism. Uh, so we await hearing uh, whether the bridge uh, will proceed, uh, and that, of course, <coughs> is a matter for colleagues in the executive in DRD and DFP. Trevor Long. Uh, I would I, I would query the Minister's assessment that it's, it's purely and not a tourism project, because I think it largely is. Um, but would she agree with me that given the numbers of people who visit Cooley and Carlingford and the relatively small amount of the cost which is going to fall to the Northern Ireland Executive and, and the amount of money that her department has put into the Mourns area in the last few years, it's actually a very worthwhile project and it should be encouraged from a tourism potential point of view. 
Well, you know, uh, the member can take whatever particular view he wants of the bridge. I am relying on officials' uh, guidance in relation to the financial implications and what the implications will be from a tourism perspective. Uh, and I have to take those on board, as indeed does the DFP minister when he's looking at the financial implications. So we await hearing from the DFP minister and, most importantly, the DRD minister in relation to those issues.